Здрасте. Вы, да, разберите. О, спасибо большое. Так, ладно, меня зовут еще раз Александр. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are still in Irkutsk. And today we are going to a very interesting and beautiful place together with our wonderful guide Alexander. У нас сегодня погода не очень будет. Там. Там обещают дождик. It is located on the opposite side of Lake Baikal from Irkutsk, already on the territory of the Republic of Buryatia. And Alexander takes us to the Lake Baikal Biosphere Reserve. The Baikal State Biosphere Reserve is located in the Republic of Buryatia and occupies the central part of the Kamar Daban mountain range which stretches along the southern shore of Lake Baikal. The central property of the reserve is located in the village of Tankhoi. To get from Irkutsk to Tankhoi, we have to drive 217 kilometers on a very well-maintained highway. And it will take about four hours. Today, we have four points on the plan. The first point is the village of Sludyanka, or rather, a visit to the Sludyanka railroad station. After all, this is the only railroad station in the whole world that is made entirely of marble. Then we want to visit the visitor center and the Lake Baikal Reserve. See the real Bargazine sable and hike along the so-called eco-path, the path to Lake Baikal. It is four kilometers long and here is the first settlement on our way. This is the village of Kultuk. Here, if you remember from the last video about our Baikal adventures, the hike on the Circumbaikal Railway Road ended. In the description you will find a link to a video about this adventure. Make sure to follow this link and watch it, because the sightseeing along our way was truly amazing. We pass the village of Kultuk, and ten minutes later we are in the town of Sliudyanka. An important railroad junction of the Trans-Siberian Railway. In fact, the town owes its existence to the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway. In honor of the mineral mica, known as Sliuda in Russian, the city was named Sliudyanka. Mica has been mined around this place for 350 years, and it was once considered one of the most valuable goods transported from Siberia to the central regions of the Russian Empire. In 1975, mica mining was discontinued, and the ore extraction in Sludyanka was rededicated to the extraction of white and pink marble. The Moscow metro stations Barakadnaya and 1905 Goda Street, for example, are lined with marble from Sludyanka. And now, of course, it's time to remember the main attraction of Sludyanka, the railway station building. After all, it is the only railway station building in the world made entirely of marble. It is said that it was originally planned to build the station out of ordinary bricks. And it is said that the Italian workers who participated in the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway came up with the idea of using marble from a nearby quarry instead of bricks. And this solution turned out to be even more economical. Since the marble quarry was nearby, there was plenty of marble. The Kamar Daban Mountains around Sliudyanka are not called marble mountains for nothing, but the delivery of a large number of bricks to the construction site would certainly cost a lot of money. And to our delight, the station was open to visitors in mid-1904. It is remarkable that after more than a century since its construction, 
The exterior of the Sludyanka station building has practically not changed. Only the marble blocks became a little darker, and the two separate entrances for people of different classes were combined into one for everyone. We no longer have any classes in our society. While the exterior of the Sludyanka station is incredibly beautiful, inside the station you'll discover a plethora of unique and captivating features. You can see the closet which houses a whole family of Baikal seals. Wow, and not only seals. Fish swim on the floor. You can also find out a lot of interesting things about Lake Baikal, about its flora and fauna. On the platform, there is a bust of the Minister of Railways of the Russian Empire, Prince Mikhail Ivanovich Kilkov. It was Mikhail Ivanovich who decided to build a junction station on Lake Baikal at this location. There were many possibilities, but the minister chose this location for a reason known only to him. The only Orthodox church in Sludyanka, the Church of St. Nicholas, is located directly opposite the station. The Church of St. Nicholas was named in honor of Emperor Nicholas II because it was built after Nicholas expressed his displeasure at the lack of an Orthodox church in the settlement during his visit to Sludyanka. During the Soviet era, the church building was used as a house of culture for railroad workers. Today, the temple serves its intended purpose as a place of worship, where devotees come together to offer their prayers and participate in religious ceremonies. Attractions in Sludyanka also include a water tower, a steam locomotive, and a house of culture for railroad workers. But we did not stop to take photos of these objects because we still had quite a long way to go and quite a big program. Namely, a visit to the visitor center, the Baikal Nature Reserve. And a walk on the path, the path to Lake Baikal of the Baikal State Reserve. But more about that in the next video. Friends, thank you for watching the video to the end. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Moreover, you are welcome to subscribe to my channel. See you soon, friends.